from X Art Park in Charlottesville, Virginia. I'm Jovina. This is the Daily Creature. I'm so excited, friends, about today's creature. It is none other than the unicorn, the greatest of mythical creatures. Let's face it, the unicorn is 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 Duke and Duchess, king and queen of mythical creaturedom. Why is it? I don't know. We, as a species, we humans have been telling stories about unicorns for about as long as we've been telling stories. Typically, the depiction of a unicorn being often a white horse, not always, horn protruding from the head, flowing mane, capable of great magical powers, etc., etc. Often a very positive symbol in stories. Not always, but often. So we love the unicorn. Today we celebrate it in art projects, and uh, speaking of which, you may remember uh, this braided candle from some episodes ago. I was going to use it for a, a project, a narwhal, narwhal, a narwhal project. Uh, instead, I think we can use it on a cardboard unicorn that I'm working on right now. So I had this piece of white packaging cardboard, and uh, I've drawn a head and some ears. Naturally, I'll have to do some cutting here. Um, and then, of course, I'd like to fashion a neck out of this cardboard. As you can see, it's a work in progress. So hopefully we'll keep that going through this episode. But let's jump right in here, friends, because I can go on and on. It's not about me. It's about unicorn. Sketchy unicorn. A drawing exercise. Friends, you'll need only for this exercise a pencil, some paper, and you know, I don't have a picture of a unicorn handy at this moment in time, but I would like to work with a reference. This wonderfully constructed plastic horse will do the trick just fine. Detailed and well-made, thanks to the good people at Schleich Plastic Animal Company. They do a fine job. It's not a paid endorsement. I really do love their work. Anyway, this is not a unicorn. This is a horse, and a horse is a horse, of course. Of course, a unicorn is often based on a horse um, in, its, in its description in, in legend and lore, in particular the European unicorn based off of horses. Sometimes there's mention of goats as well in what I've read. The Asian unicorn, however, um, they say favors a deer, uh, and sometimes has scales. Isn't that something? But friends, we'll focus on the horse and we'll go kind of standard European unicorn here. And uh, as I have mentioned before, and I'll mention again, when you're drawing a creature, isn't it just a series of shapes? Little circles, bigger circles. And I, I, I like having this 3D reference accurately depicted horse reference here and I'm using light lines and again I'm considering what is that what is that series of shapes circles interesting to sort of take a look at the way the the horse leg looks the way it bends comes down to a hoof and friends when you are creating and using a reference, do remember that you can, I'll keep it a little, a little shorter here. I'm gonna jump in with my eraser because I realize I'm down at the bottom of the paper here. So we'll, we'll put it sort of there. Remember friends, you can stick with your reference, draw completely from it the whole time, or use it as a springboard upon which you can jump off and add your own bits and details. I'm right away, I like the idea that there's some flowy sort of hair down on the uh, the hoof of my unicorn. I'm going to bring up her right leg there. Well, it would be, it would be her right leg. And uh, I'm going to get another leg into the back here. And again, friends, I can't stress enough that if you're sketching with light lines, it makes it so much easier, so much simpler a task to go back in there when you want to get rid of some of those lines as you're getting close to a finished um, unicorn sketch. And it's nice. It can be so relaxing to just sort of let your hand go with some shading, 
find your way into the drawing, take your time with it, find your way in on your own terms. Now, this horse, of course, has the, the traditional sort of bushy tail of the horse uh, as we know it. Unicorns are described in a couple of different ways, and they say that the unicorn has a tail that's like a goat or an ox, often I've heard it described. So I'm going to go with that ox tail, a little kind of a bushiness to the end here. Medieval unicorn paintings, tapestries tend to have that style of tail, and that's where I've landed. I'm going to pop in here to the face a bit. And I'm going to kind of map out where I want that eye. The nostril, such an important feature of any equine creature, the, the horse, the unicorn, what have you, they've got those serious nostrils. And the mouth, I'm going to go in here and erase just a bit and work out a little unicorn mouth. And how about a smile for this unicorn? Why not? All that magic. The unicorn has a lot to smile about. The ears I see coming right out of the top of the horse head. I'm going to go the same with my, my unicorn. I also notice that perhaps the whole head of my unicorn is a little larger than I, I want it to be. That eye is sort of right there. And then we move right into the head and the ears coming up. And kind of a bit of shading in the ear I think is helpful. Again, the pencil, such a nice thing to sketch with because you have the ability to erase. I like to bring a little mane right down over the eye a bit. And I'm going to erase a little spot for that horn, although I'm not going to get the horn in there yet. I'm going to focus on the mane. Our horse's mane may be difficult for you to see because the mane is black on top of the horse's initial neck and fur being black as well, but the mane can sort of hang down, flow a bit. I'm gonna go in there and erase as well. We won't color this particular creature here, but it's fun to consider that, what color you would make your unicorn. Again, you have a lot of traditional mentions of the unicorn being white, but there are in both European and Asian legends and lore, Discussions of red uh, unicorns, yellow and, and brown unicorns as well. In some cases, the horns are longer, typically in the European stories, longer horns. The Asian stories talk of a shorter, thicker horn. I think for our horn, we'll go pretty traditional, longer, coming right up from the head and going pretty, pretty large on that horn there. Bring the mane around a bit, a little hint of an ear back there, and some fun little spiral lines to give that horn a bit of detail. They talk often of the unicorn having a goat's beard. I'm going to go ahead and do a little bit of a beard for this unicorn as well. Why not? Matching those shaggy hooves. Here we go. Friends, even now I'm seeing an end in sight for this sketch. I'm feeling like, okay, yeah, it's a start. It's a unicorn. I'll darken the eye a little bit. Now, you have your traditional unicorn, which is a lot of fun, but something I really enjoy doing, I think I went too shaggy here on the, the back legs, something I really enjoy doing with a unicorn, um, or any creature that has such a kind of a well-known look to it, such an iconic look, I like to mix it up a bit, get a little more cartoony with the unicorn. Uh, I'm going to remove our reference. Thanks, horsey. And I'm going to grab a pen and a sketchbook. And we're going to move out of our, our pencil -y sketching and into something that's just a bit more playful. Saying goodbye to pencil and eraser. And why don't we move in a bit here as well. And I'm going to make a unicorn standing upright, again, a bit more cartoony. And my approach here is going to be less about starting with the shapes. And I'm going to, as I sometimes do, start with a feature. And the feature I'm starting with is the eye. And I've begun with an eye of my unicorn. I think I'm going to put this unicorn in a little outfit. And I think I'm going to make him 
a sort of a, a little unicorn boy, maybe a unicorn guy, and maybe not so happy because we imagine the unicorn as a powerful magical symbol. Sometimes it's funny just to think of the unicorn as, well, you know. His horn is going to have some ridges on it like that, the spiral horn. We're going to give him that same sort of hair that I added for the other guy. I'm going to do some details in the horn. That comes clear. That's nice. And now I'm going to knock out the... Again, we're going to, I'm going to put him in a little outfit here. And you know, my unicorn, my unicorn has been having a lot of sweets. He's a bit of a tubby unicorn. No judgment. But there you have it. And uh, maybe he shaved back there and got rid of the mane. We'll leave it like that for now. It's an interesting hipster haircut for a unicorn. And I'm going to draw my unicorn's hooves here, more like arms on the side of the body. And we'll put the unicorn in shorts here, the leg behind there. We'll get to those legs in a moment. And uh, I'll stick with the kind of oxtail for the unicorn. up like that a bit. And I'm gonna go ahead and just get some little lines of detail in here. Maybe a little shading under the neck. And uh, let's see, we're going to now move our unicorn up just a bit and we'll deal with unicorn legs, which I'm going less for a horse style leg and these legs are really kind of straight up human-like, human-esque. And I'm gonna give the unicorn some socks. We'll give him striped socks, just a couple of stripes up on the top there. And we'll do another sock here. And I'm gonna put him into sneakers. Usually for sneakers, I'll just kind of add that sole in the front, you know, general sort of sneaker look. A couple of stripes on there. Not bad, not bad, I'm happy with. Now that looks, I'll put the other foot maybe out a bit more that way. He's tapping his foot. I'm not sure what he's doing. Let's pull back out a bit. Look at that. This is the other guy's tail. So from here, I think I'm just going to go in in detail and keep the beard going. Should we keep his hair shaved in the back? Let's do it. Why not? Less of your traditional unicorn. I've put my own sort of stamp on this unicorn. I had fun doing it. Which is the right way? The traditional unicorn or my unicorn? But friends, you know the answer. We are not operating in rights or wrongs here. This is about artistic choices funny sort of punky unicorn who's been hitting the candy, more of a traditional unicorn. You decide, draw them both and draw more. Do research friends, find references, keep enjoying it. A Little bit of masking tape on this ear, it sticks. And uh, I've placed some white paper, I've drawn some lines. Our cardboard unicorn is coming along. There's more to do, of course, but uh, oh my gosh, how cool! This is uh, someone's calling in. This is a viewer, a viewer calling in. We've this has never happened before. I have, it's a feature that we have not yet used, and no one's called in. I'm not even sure. Okay, I think I. Okay, viewer, uh, caller, you are on the Daily Creature. How are you? Hi, Joe. How are you? Dragon here. Hi, Dragon. Hi. Uh, 
Listen, I'm really loving the program, Joe. Good work to you and it's Art Park. Kudo. No, that's good. It's so important to get this free arts content out to people right now of all times. Listen, I'm really excited, Joe, about coming on the program. Are we still on for tomorrow? Yes. Yes. Uh, it was, I like to surprise uh -huh. sort of the viewer um, at the beginning of, of each program and tell them the creature, but yep, yeah, we are on for tomorrow. Tomorrow's creature is dragon. Oh, good. I'm very, I'm looking forward to it. Listen, Joe, earlier in the program, you said unicorns are, are so great. Something about unicorns are great and dragons are no good. I didn't say that dragons are no good. I did, I did not say. Okay, keep your voice down, please. Keep your voice down. You know, Joe, I could burn up a unicorn with fire like that. Okay, okay, Dragon. Thanks so much, Dragon. We'll talk to you soon. We'll see you tomorrow. We're looking forward to it. <laughs> yes, uh, tomorrow's creature is Dragon. So that is a huge, exciting thing to look forward to, for sure. It's nice to have something to look forward to. Um, truth be told, Dragon is a bit of a bully, I think, as you can see. Uh, it doesn't necessarily make him a less interesting creature, but he's a bit of a bully. Have you ever been a bully? Have you ever been bullied? Think about it. But hey, you're about to get busted. Unicorn busted. Unicorn bust out of clay. That's right, friends. It's a sculpture project wherein you will need a few colors of clay. I'm going to work with this larger piece of white here for the base color of my unicorn. You can go with whatever color you'd like for your unicorn bust. I've got a chunk of this color here, kind of a reddish pinkish, I want to use for the mane of my unicorn. And I've got a couple of yellow pieces here, a lighter and a darker yellow. And I'll use that for the unicorn's horn. And we're making a bust. What does it mean? What's a bust? A bust is basically the head and the shoulders of a figure, typically a human, but it could be an animal. In this case, it will be our unicorn. This part of the unicorn, does it make sense? I hope so. And to create the shoulders, the neck and the head, we'll start by softening up our clay here. You know the drill unicorns, take it, squeeze it, smush it, get it nice and soft. When it's soft enough, you can roll it into a kind of an oval shape, just like that. Take those pincher fingers and let's pinch just a little bit of white. We're going to put it on the side and we're going to save it, possibly for ears, though we could probably just pinch the ears. Take those pincher fingers now and begin to work out the shoulders of your bust. The shoulders that ultimately your bust will sit up upon. And I'm using, as you can see right now, the flat of this work table to flatten the bottom of my bust. That's right, friends, to flatten a surface, simply employ a flat surface. Pressing this in here, I hope that makes sense, to create that flatness there. And now I'm going to take my pincher fingers and I'm going to work out the neck, which we can all agree is, is a rather horse-like neck on the bust. And then also pinch your fingers again, wide the long face, because I'm horse-like. There we are. And I'm pinching out the snout rounding and i'm going to turn the head a bit so we can just get a good a good view of our unicorn bust does it make sense so far i'm going to come in a bit closer for a moment here and you got those pinchers still i hope so we're going to pinch out an ear but i start with a lump dudes Lump on one side of the head, lump on the other side of the head. I don't pinch flat right away for the ears. 
They don't quite look like ears yet, but they will once I go flatter and get kind of pointy with it. Horses have ears, which are unicorns as well, I would assume, that can kind of move with the sound, right? Like cats and dogs. We don't have that luxury, humans. Typically, we cannot move our ears with sound. Pinch out those ears. You can even go in with a sharp pencil. So I've got the sharp pencil here. You're also going to maybe employ a stirring stick as we have. We'll get to that. The old coffee stirring stick makes a great tool. We don't need it yet. You take that sharp pencil and go in and put a little hole in the ear just like that. I love my sharp pencil. What a great sculpture tool. I'm not going to pop an eye socket in yet, but I will deal with the nostril of my unicorn. Why not? Looking horsey already. Equin. And I'm going to take a look at each side of the face now. I'm liking it, I'm liking it. We'll bring it back a bit. We'll pull our shot back a bit as well here. Let's talk about the mane. The mane, of course, is the hair that's going to run down the back of the neck and up on top of the head will have some mane as well. Keeping us in that side position here, I'm gonna grab some of this color of clay. It's kind of a, you could call it a hot pink or a, a red. I'm rolling it out, the old flat hand, fingers together, rolling out a kind of a worm shape. There are a number of ways that you can approach the main when it comes to your construction and really how you texture the clay. I'm partial to this maneuver where you take those pincher fingers and you work out a whole bunch of skinny worm shapes. And I mean, take a moment, forget unicorns, forget horses, forget creatures. Focus on the simple but rather fulfilling task of creating as many of these little worm guys as you can. I would say try to hit at least 10 of them. These will enable you to style that mane in the way that you see fit. But if you can get to 10 of these little strands, you've got something to work with. You've got something you can start off with. Friends, this is not the only way to make a unicorn's mane. This is not the only way to make a unicorn. This is not the only way to make a unicorn bust. You could do one out of stone. You could do one out of recycled materials with some hot glue. This is the way to do it with a little bit of non-hardening modeling clay and a good 20 minutes on your hands. Do I have 10, two, four, six, eight, nine? I'm gonna do one more. Now we've got 10 of these puppies here. I'm gonna take a look and I'm going to just simply grab one and begin laying it onto the neck, pressing it in there a bit. I'm going to remove a small piece from the end of it because I don't think I need it, and I'm going to add it there. Only and even now, we begin to see how these little strips, when appearing multiply, they can begin to look like hair, like the very mane for our unicorn. Now, what I like about these too is that they can be they can be styled quite nicely. You, know, you can kind of lift these little worms up a bit, give it a sort of a curl. You can't tame the mane of a unicorn. Everybody knows that. Um, the more the merrier. And you know, you might get to a point where you're saying, hey, I need more of these little rolly worms. You know what you do then, friends? You make them. 
as soon as you realize you need more, you make them. I am, as I so often do on this program, focusing on the camera side of the sculpture, and I've gotten less main on my other side. Maybe I'll amend that at some point, but friends, this program is often about just getting the point across so that you are set free to gallop unicorn that you are. This, I think, makes a fine mane, and I would like to add some more, and perhaps I will. But I mentioned numerous methods for creating that sort of texture that we see in manes and in hair. I'm going to try a slightly different approach with the beard. Yes, I'm going to give my unicorn a little bit of a beard. So I take a little kind of a teardrop shape, almost like a Hershey's kiss. I can roll it between my fingers, press it flat, and then I'm gonna pop it right on there and actually smooth it in a bit. So I've got that there. And what I'm going to do then is actually texture it. So it's one piece that I texture and I'm going to use the old coffee stirrer, which friends, I wouldn't necessarily use a coffee stirrer myself because I have a whole bunch of sculpture tools but I realize that you may not. If you have sculpture tools, little plastic knives, little wooden knives, I suggest you use them. But check that out. Just by distressing the surface with the edge of my coffee stirrer, nay, sculpture tool, I create a kind of a look of fur. It's beard-like, let's face it. You know, it's kind of strange that his mane and his beard have different consistencies, but hey, we're not here to judge. Friends, you still have that coffee stirrer? Great. You didn't stir your coffee with it? I'm going to take it now. See where I'm holding it right there? And I'm going to chip chop right under the nose to create a mouth. Friends, it may not be pretty to start. You cut that mouth. If you're just doing your work with tools and then leaving it alone, I recommend you think that through again. Go back in with your hands and possibly even other tools. I'm gonna to go in and just gently adjust. An ugly sentence, isn't it? Just gently adjust. Just gently adjust. But truly do adjust it gently. Go in there, make some moves with the fingers. You know what I think I'm going to do is give my unicorn a lip. Lucky I saved some of this white clay here. I'm back to rolling super skinny bits. And I've got a super skinny bit. And because I, I feel that mouth is a little bit, I don't even know how to describe it. It's not quite what I want. So I'm going to give a lip to my unicorn, or I should say a set of lips by rolling out this little worm shape and then see where I've, I've put it to the corner of the mouth. I'm clipping it off there, smoothing it in a bit. Yeah, I like that. I like the way that that works. We'll do a top lip, we'll even do a bottom lip too. I feel that makes this creature a bit horsier and uh, I want a horsey unicorn. I'm not so into the, the goat unicorn. I like the horse unicorn. It is my creative right. There we go. I kind of like that look. I like how that's going. Now, friends, I could spend all day getting back in here and touching up each little detail. It's a blessing and a curse, you know. Sometimes you have to be able to just walk away from your unicorn bust. And folks, I promise we'll see this unicorn bust standing in a moment. We're just going to get through the rest of the sculpture. And again, we'll focus on this front part. When it comes to the eyes and the horn, well, we get a little complicated and we, we get super exciting, too. Uh, I would like to add a little extra jaw to my unicorn. I still have some of this white. So before we get to that excitement of eyes and horns, I take a little blob between my fingers and I smush it. 
and I press it in here and I kind of just smooth it. I make it one. I make it one and we create a nice sort of extra amount there, a bit of a heavier jaw for our horse, for our unicorn. Excuse me, our unicorn. It's only the creature of the day. You'd think I could remember that. Let's get the horn out of the way first. I've got this lovely yellow clay, and then I have as well this slightly lighter colored yellow clay. I take the old pincher fingers, I break a piece that makes sense for the horn size. I roll it, one or two fingers will do. These are not giant pieces, friends. This is a rather tiny bust. Busts can be any size. We happen to be working rather tinily. And uh, I'm gonna make this just a bit smaller. Give it another little roll here. And I've got the one horn shape there. And then, set you aside, unicorn. I take a teeny tiny bit of this other yellow. And friends, this is where it really starts to get interesting. This is where it could get a little bit magical. But make no mistake, dear artists, it's not magic. It's mechanical. And it's a little bit tricky because there's small parts with your fingers, but you'll get there with practice. It is not magic. It is magical, but it is not magic. You can do this. Take that little worm shape and stick it to the horn shape. Does that make sense? Right around here. Mind you, this is the part that's going to go into the head. This here is the end of the horn. This worm that we've created is a spiral to go around the horn. So we've stuck it on there. Be ginger with it, be delicate, and get my dumb, fat, unmanicured fingers to not be in the way. But Friends, if you can see what I'm doing here, I'm creating a spiral. This worm shape is getting spiraled all the way around the horn till we get something like this. Holy moly, isn't that lovely? Well, it's lovely enough, I think. So get in there and this could be the most fun or the least fun part, depending on who you are as an artist, but get a big old hole in the head of your unicorn. You saw that, sorry about that blurriness, that momentary blurriness, but we've got the hole there in the head of the unicorn. Take the horn, remember we discussed base versus tip, pop the base in there and there we go. We have our unicorn's horn in. One last thing, friendos, and apologies, I always seem to do this. I didn't mention that. Why don't we get some beads out? Of course, it doesn't have to be beads. If you have beads, little beads, they make great eyes. You know that's true, but I'll take a second one because I'll probably do two eyes here, even though I'm focused just there. You can use clay for the eyes. You could use... If you have wild rice, you could stick bits of wild rice in for the eyes. There are so many ways you can go. Taking a little bit of this white clay, guys, and I'm setting a place for the eye, if that makes sense. I want to set a place for the eye. I'm going to press a little bit of white right on there, and then I'm going to grab that eye. Tiny bead. Here we go. I'm putting it in hole up not hole out. I don't want to see the hole in this case. I just want to cheat that beautiful shiny plastic. So I've got the eye kind of like that. One last thing I'm going to do to kind of tilt the expression, I take the teeniest, tiniest bit of white. I roll a little teeny tiny worm shape. You guys know I love to add the eyelid for expression. That's I like the look on my unicorn's face. My unicorn's kind of saying, hey, it's okay. I don't know, what is that unicorn saying? What are you saying, unicorn? Let's see him upright. And there you have it, friends. Who is that horse? That's no horse. That's a unicorn. Busted. Popcorn, baby corn, unicorn. Make up a catchphrase, friends. Get creative. You know, 
Creativity doesn't always have to be poured all direct and focused into a hands-on art project or mounting an opera or something like that. Once in a while, it's good to keep in mind that you just wanna live with some creativity. Put it in little bits here and there. Make life more colorful for you and for the people that you love by adding those little dashes of creativity. A catchphrase is a great way to do it, you know? You walk into a room, you say your catchphrase, give it some sort of a gesture as well, a corresponding gesture like this, popcorn, baby corn, unicorn. Everyone's gonna love it, I'm telling you. Don't have a cow, man. Make up a catchphrase. Check this out. I was able to steady my unicorn with a coffee mug, of all things. I'll be careful not to drop it. It doesn't belong to me. I've got the ears on, and I'm all set to put this horn on. I'm a little worried about the weight of it, and I'm peeling the cardboard a bit, and you know what I discover? It's corrugated cardboard. Corrugation. The corrugated cardboard has cardboard inside, that sort of wavy cardboard, that makes it stronger and it creates a sort of a two-ply situation, and you can peel back the paper of the cardboard to reveal this kind of a washboard ridge. Isn't that fun? Isn't that wonderful? And I said, you know what? Bob I braided candle, yet again, we'll find a place for you. There's a place for us, somewhere a place for us, but I made my unicorn horn with this corrugated cardboard. We cut a little hole right here, by we I mean me, and the horn fits. I've got a small piece of tape on the back of Senor Unicorn, and I'll just tighten there. Still a whip. That is a work in progress, a whip. That's a way you can shorten work in progress. Isn't that fun? Still a whip. I want to work on the eyes. Got to figure out the mane. What do you think for a mane? What do you have around the house that you could use for a unicorn mane? Do you have yarn? Do you have some fur or felt? We could simply add cardboard as well. Your options are nearly limitless, friends. When you're hitting that cardboard, you're not getting bored, and you're making unicorns. So um, I would be remiss if I did not end this unicorn episode by talking a bit about the rhino. I think it's rough to be a rhino uh, because the unicorn gets such attention and there is the rhino, a one-horned mammal, rather related to a horse, right? Why can't he be called unicorn? Why can't he be as magical? So I've written a haiku, okay? A haiku is a traditional Japanese poem. It's a short poem, um, and it's, it's five syllables, then it's seven syllables, then it's five syllables. So uh, my little ode to rhino here in the form of a haiku. To be you, rhino, for we all love unicorns, but you have one horn. I'll give it to you again real quick. To be you, Rhino, for we all love unicorns, but you have one horn. Friends, why don't you go write a haiku? From Ix Art Park in Charlottesville, Virginia, I'm Jovina. This has been your daily creature. Write a haiku, come up with a catchphrase, stay creative. Mm -hmm.